In this video, I will go over the different methods that are used to monitor and measure your heart rate that is needed to know for the IGCSE syllabus, and as well as stating and explaining the effect of exercise on your heart rate. So first of all, the first method you can use to measure and monitor your heart rate would be using an ECG. Now, of course, for the IGCSC syllabus, they don't require much from this. You only need to know that this first wave is a P wave, and this whole complex where it goes down, then up, then down, then up again is the QRS wave or the QRS complex. And then the wave after that is called a T wave. The next thing is that you can do is to measure your pulse rate, and you probably would have done this experiment in school before, which is why they might ask you on your paper 6 about this. And depending on the question, you might need to add a few things to it or remove a few things, but this is the basic points that you may want to mention in your answer. So first of all, you place your fingers or your finger on your neck or wrist, and these sites are where the blood vessels or the veins are near to the skin surface so that you can feel it better. And also there is a heart bone structure underneath so that you can press the vein against so that you can feel the pulse better. And then all you gotta do is count the number of pulses you feel over a certain time period. For example, a minute, or if you wanna make it more liable, you can count it for oh, 10 minutes, then divide that number by 10. And you can also listen to the sound of your heart valves closing. And this is quite simple because all you gotta do is use a stethoscope. And you may have seen many doctors done this before. It is much less likely that the exam board will ask for how these things work. If you're ever asked to describe an experiment in order to investigate the effect of physical exercise on your pulse rate, then obviously, again, depending on the question, you might want to add some things or remove some things from what I'm about to explain, but these are the basic points that you might want to mention. So first of all, you got to get a group of people, and this is to make your experiment more reliable because you're testing it on several specimen and you should mention that they are of the same age or gender and this is a controlled variable to make your experiment more fair and next you're going to measure their pulse rate before the exercise and then you get them to do exercise you should mention that it is the same type of exercise and it is for the same duration and then you got to measure their pulse rate immediately after exercise and I stress on immediately because this could be another mark because you're showing a way of making your experiment much more reliable. And as a result, um, you should probably find that the pulse rate has increased after physical exercise. And now we gotta move on to explaining that if they ever ask you about it. And this would be more likely to come up on paper three rather than paper six, like the previous one. And if this ever comes up, depending on what they're asking, you might need to add or remove some points, but this is the basics of how it works. So your muscles are contracting more, so they need more energy, which means that they would need to aerobically respire more, and therefore they require an increased amount of oxygen and glucose for the increased amount of aerobic respiration, which means that the heart has to pump harder and faster in order to deliver more blood and glucose to muscle cells in a shorter amount of time. And as you know, the blood doesn't just deliver materials to the cells, it also takes away the wastes from the cells. So this means that we'll be able to remove more carbon dioxide and water from muscle cells in a shorter period of time. Now, of course, this makes sense because your muscle cells would be producing more carbon dioxide and water than usual, just in the same way that it needs more oxygen and glucose than usual because it's just aerobically respiring more. And you will see that I'm not going in depth about anaerobic respiration here because it is often not needed for this question. The questions where they ask about the oxygen debt is where you might want to mention anaerobic respiration, but often not for this, unless they explicitly state so. So now I want to summarize the video by firstly saying that you can monitor and measure your heart activity using an electrocardiogram. You can measure the pulse rate by sticking your finger at your wrist or your neck and you can also listen to the sound of your heart valves closing by using a stethoscope and when asked to describe an experiment in order to investigate the effect of physical exercise on your pulse rate you should mention that you're using a group of people as opposed to using just one person 
You gotta mention some control variables such as use people of the same age, gender, same time of exercise, same duration. And you should also mention techniques for reliability such as measuring the pulse rate immediately after exercise. Now, of course, you should mention this in addition to describing what you do, which of course I've mentioned in the previous slide. So, when you do the experiment, the pulse rate should increase after physical exercise, and this is because of the increased amount of oxygen and glucose that is needed for the increased energy need for increased muscle contractions, because the muscle cells are aerobically respiring more. So that means that the heart has to pump faster in order to deliver materials and remove wastes from muscle cells much faster. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you out and if it did, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below and like and subscribe for more.